What are we doing here? What are we doing? I don't know if you can tell, but we're still at the point in the day where we're sitting on the floor and we are mourning the loss of the Beit HaMikdash. But I believe that it's much more than that. And Chazal teach us that it's more than that. And the goal that we should all be having is to make sure that next year we are not sitting on the floor, that we do not have uh, beards and uh, restrictions that are, that are linked to mourning. I want to start with a story. Uh, this is a story that one of my colleagues heard, um, and it's told over by Rabbi Friend, who knows the uh, doctor that this happened to. It was a doctor in Rabbi Friend's kahal, and she was assigned to, uh, to a pediatric ward in Dallas for her training, and she became uh, a top a pediatrician. She made aliyah, and went to Eretz Israel and was a top doctor in uh, one of the hospitals in Yerushalayim. And the doctor is, comes outside and sees that there's a woman in the waiting room of the pediatric ward. And the woman is dressed in her attire for her wedding. She is dressed in a white, beautiful white wedding gown, veil and all. And she's sitting in the pediatric ward. She doesn't look distraught. She looks happy. This is a tremendously odd scene. The doctor, the woman from Rabbi Franz Kahal, comes out and says, what are you doing here, miss? You seem very out of place, if you don't mind me asking. And she got up and she said, doctor, please, I need to go around to see all of the patients in the pediatric ward. Today is my wedding day. And rabbis tell us that on a wedding day, the concept is that a woman is able to get whatever they want with their tefillot. Their tefillot go straight to HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And I wanted to use the power of my wedding day to be able to heal the sick children. Needless to say, the doctor was dumbfounded. Look at this woman on her wedding day, what she was able to be thinking about and how her mind was not on herself. I'm using this story just as an opening to what I think the entire idea of Tisha Av is connected to, to what the entire idea of Sinat Hinam, of baseless hatred, is connected to, and Bezrat Hashem, how we can correct our misdeeds. The Torah tells us, Torah Ba'apeh, the Gemara tells us that there are two happiest days on the Jewish calendar. One is Yom Kippur, and the other is Tu Be'av. Yom Kippur, we can understand. Yom Kippur, we can understand that HaKadosh Baruch Hu has given us a chance to do great, a chance to take our misdeeds and do Teshuvah and given us the opportunity to become cleansed. But why Tu Be'av? Why is Tu Be'av one of the happiest days on the calendar? We see that it's connected from a Gemara in Bava Batra that connects to our day, to Tisha Be'av. It was a city known as Betar. Betar, if you know your Jewish history, was one of the final strongholds in the Bayit Sheni after the destruction of the Second Temple. And according to most opinion, many opinions, there was upwards of two to 300,000 people that were slaughtered by the Romans at Betar. 
and what happened on Tu Be'av was not the massacre, but the ability to bury the dead. The Gemara and Baba Madras says as follows, Amar Rav Matana, Haruge Betar Hayul Kvura, on Tu Be'av, the Haruge Betar, the victims of Betar were able to be buried. And the inhabitants, they looked and they coined a Beracha. And when I tell you this Beracha, many of you, most of you know this Beracha. They coined the Beracha, Baruch Atah Hashem, Ruken Mechalam, Atov Behametiv, on the good, and that good is being done. Hatov Shelohi Srihu, the Gemara says. Hametiv Shehayu Lekvura. Tov v'hametiv, why the double language that there's a blessing on the good and that Hashem has bestowed good upon us, good that their bodies did not rot and metiv that they were finally able to be buried. This is a shocking Gemara. This is where we get our beracha of hatov v'hametiv from. This is where we get the concept of saying a beracha of extra greatness to Hashem Usually, when do we say Atov HaMetiv? Ashkenazim say this at a Brit Milah. We say it every Shabbat when we have another bottle of wine. Gemara Masech Berachot says that you can say it on good tidings. The origin of this is, is Tisha Be'av, Tu Be'av, the, the great day of what we're able to bury our dead. Why? What's the concept? Why is this something that is so amazing? If you look at the Mefarshim, it's a very powerful answer. However, before we get to the answer, I'd like to go to two other examples to be able to get to our key concept, which is going to be the answer by Betar and Tobeh HaMetiv. Moshe Rabbeinu receives his first prophecy at the Sene, at the burning bush. And the Mefarshim struggle and they say, why did HaKadosh Baruch Hu give the imagery to, to Moshe of a sene, of a little tiny shrub? Why not in something more grand? Why not in something more exquisite? Why in not in something that really captured the essence of the grandeur of B'nai Israel? We're now about to become a nation. The greatest prophet is about to be revealed in Moshe Rabbeinu. A tiny shrub, no fruits, no grandeur, no a, a massive amounts of leaves. And Rashi gives us the answer. Rashi tells us it's that HaKadosh Baruch Hu wanted to give a very powerful message to Moshe Rabbeinu that I am with you in your pain. I am with you, B'nai Israel, in your times of tragedy. I am with you in your times of pain. Moshe, I know what's going on in Mitzrayim. I know what you're going through. And don't worry, I am with you. Similarly, at Har Sinai, there's a very important image that HaKadosh Baruch Hu reveals himself to us where HaKadosh Baruch Hu says, I am also with you. When Moshe Rabbeinu comes and sees and gets the vision at Har Sinai, he sees that what is resting at, at HaKadosh Baruch Hu's Kiv Yachol, as if to say feet, his feet was Livnat HaSapir. Livnat HaSapir means sapphire Bricks, sapphire brickwork. And this is very puzzling. Sapphire bricks? Why, what is this image doing at Kiv Yachol, at the feet of Hashem? And it also, once again, connects to the same idea of the Sene. What made us a nation? The bricks that we laid down in Egypt. The bricks that... Ben Israel toiled over Piton Meses, those cities that were done for no reason. And yet, Hakadosh Baruch Hu says, I feel your pain. 
I feel your pain. And again, when we say feel, it's in, of course in quotation marks. I feel the pain of Ben Israel. I am with you. These bricks will always be a part of my being, as if to say. That when Ben Israel experiences pain, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is with us. Let's go back now to Tu Be'av and Betar. When the inhabitants came and they saw the bodies of the deceased, of course, this was a terrible thing. This was a terrible calamity. However, what was the message? The message of seeing that Ben Israel, even though they're decimated and destroyed, when they came to bury the bodies and they saw that there was a miracle, that the bodies had not yet been decomposed, they saw that Hashem was still with them. They used it as a sign to say, Hashem is with us. Hashem desires our tefillot. He desires us to be close. And even though we are in pain, we are in peril, we're in tragedy, God is still with us. God is still able to understand that He is holding our hands. I believe that this concept of nose be'ol havero, it means that you're carrying your friend's burden, is really the antidote to sin'at chinam. The reason why we're sitting on the floor today is because we have failed at the concept of nose be'ol havero, of carrying the burden of our friend. Many times we don't even realize that we're doing it. Many times we don't realize that some of our actions are so callous, are so fickle, are so without concern for our fellow men and women that we don't realize that what we're really doing is causing such pain to our friend. And in turn, the reaction that people most likely have to that is a type of sin'ah, a type of hatred. Let's give an example from a mitzvah. The Torah tells us, Im kesef talvet ami, that when you want to give a person a loan, you, what must you do? You must verily, surely give that person a loan. But the continuation, et ani imach. Let the poor person be together with you. What does that mean? It means, in case of I mean, you need to give the loan, okay? God forbid there's a person knocking on my door and he needs to get a loan. The end of the Pasuk is puzzling. But let the poor person be with you. Be with you how? Rashi quotes the Midrash. And says the following. It says, Heve mistakel be'atzmecha. A person needs to view his or herself. Ke'ilu ata'ani. A person needs to view himself as if you are the ani. How difficult would it have been for you to come and knock on a door for somebody and say, please, I'm behind on my mortgage. They're going to evict me. Please, I need money. I can't feed the family. Please, I need money. They're going to throw the kids out of yeshiva. It's not just enough to write the check. It's not enough just to help somebody and give them money. It's not enough just to get rid of the problem, but say, I helped. What must we do? The Torah is mandating from us to say, you need to put yourself in that person's shoes. You want to really fulfill the mitzvah? You want to really understand what giving means? You want to really understand what this person is going through? You need to put yourself in their shoes. You need to be able to take that pain that the other person is feeling and put it on your side. 
You want to take the pain that that person is feeling and make it a part of you. If you're not able to be no said, the all havero no said to carry all the burden of your friend, then we're missing a connection with our friend. We're missing what the Torah really wanted us to be a part of. We're missing what somebody says to us. Hey, did you like the rabbi's speech? And this will be a personal example. And now the rabbi's speech became the topic of everyone's Shabbat table. As my mom likes to tell me, that rabbi has a mother. So if you're destroying the rabbi, that rabbi has friends, family. If you had to give a speech, how would you want your speech to be received? Torn apart with a fine-tooth comb. He said this, ended the sentence like that. I didn't like how he hit it this way. I didn't like this part of the message. Terrible. How could he? He didn't think to say this. Or maybe to hear the positive points of the speech. Let's take, let's go a little deeper. Person goes to a wedding, to an engagement party, and sees somebody who might be judged as a little bit uh, older, quote unquote, by standards, devour the community, and says, No, a bow by you. Is that person giving a beracha? Or maybe that person is not really being sensitive in this person is carrying around that burden. Maybe they know that they're the oldest person at that party. Maybe they know that they are not yet married. And yet, where's the sensitivity? The answer is there is no sensitivity. It's because we've, we failed at carrying our friend's burden. We don't know what it's like because we don't walk in their shoes. But what's our obligation? Our obligation is to walk in their shoes. When a person really can understand that this is another human being, that I would feel exactly that same way if it happened to me, now you're on the road to fixing sin'at finam you're making sure that you're engaged in Ahavat Hina. What HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants from us is this level of sensitivity. The reason why we're sitting on the floor today is because we've lacked that sensitivity. The people who came to Betar, Yerushalayim, and saw those dead bodies, it was a calamity of unspeakable nature. And yet, they coined the beracha of Tov v'hametiv, that HaKadosh Baruch Hu was good. Why? Because the fact that they saw that the bodies had not decomposed, they knew that God was still with them. God was with them in their pain. God is always with us in our pain as well. In this long galut, Hashem is with us as well. He was with us by the burning bush. He was with Moshe Rabbeinu. And that was the message. He was with us at Matan Torah, never forgetting Mitzrayim. All of our mitzvot, Kiddush, Shabbat, Tefillin, Tzedakah, everything to remember that we were destitute in Mitzrayim. And when we sit here on the floor in Tisha Be'av, we need to understand that that's what HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants from us. That HaKadosh Baruch Hu wants from us to understand our friend's plight. When we understand our friend's plight, it is a direct tikkun and a help and a correction for sinat hainam, for baseless hatred. I'd like to close with a very powerful Gemara that we'll read together. And in this Gemara, it really sets the focus for us. It sets the focus and sets the tone for us to be able to understand what HaKadosh Baruch Hu truly wants from us. We've said it here, wants us to put ourselves in our friend's shoes. But how do we do that? We've left that piece out. How are we able to take ourselves from a level of possibly, at the lowest level, not caring about our friend, and, and go to the level 
of Ahavat Hinam and helping our friend and be able to understand and have those ties, those positive ties that Hashem wants. The answer is actually in the Gemara, Masechet Sota, Dav Yodal and Amur Aleph. The context of this Gemara is Moshe Rabbeinu's burial. And the Gemara seeks to understand why Moshe Rabbeinu's uh, burial spot is not given and revealed to us. And through this discourse, the Gemara uh, wants to impart upon us what's the most important part of HaKadosh Baruch Hu being able to give us mitzvot. I'll read the lesson to everybody right now. Ve'amar Rabbi Hama Rabbi Hanina. Rabbi Hama, the son of Rabbi Hanina, said, "My dichtiv." Right? What is the meaning of which is written? Achare Hashem Elokechem Telechu. This is our question. Follow in the footsteps of Hashem, your God. So the Gemara asks, "Vechi Efshar Lo LeAdam Halech Achar Shechina." Is it actually possible for Hashem to uh, be able to, for us to walk in Hashem's uh, in the in the footsteps of the Shekhinah? The Halok Var Neemar it already says Ki Hashem Elokecha Esh Ochelahu. The Shekhinah is a consuming fire. There is no possible way for you to walk in the ways of the Shekhinah. It'll burn you up. Ela, what does it mean? Like most uh, of these types of gemarot, it means it's coming to teach us something deeper and something that represents. It says, Ela lehalech ahar midotav shel hakadosh baruch Hu. Rather, it means to follow in the ways of Hashem. Now, what would you think the ways would be? What is the most important thing to focus on about hakadosh baruch Hu? Says, Mahu malbish arumim, af ata halbesh arumim. Just like he clothes the naked, so you too you clothe the naked. Dichtiv, vayas Hashem elokim le Adam, ul ishto could not or vayal bishem. Just like he did so in the beginning of the Torah, for Adam and Chava, and clothed them. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Biker Cholim. Not only that, what does Hashem do? He visits the sick. Dichti Vayera Elav Hashem Elonei Mamre. And Hashem came to Avraham on the third day, obviously, in his Berit Milah, to pay him a visit, to be a Mevaker Cholim. Apata Vaker Cholim. You too need to go and, go and, and be Mevaker Cholim. A third one. HaKadosh Baruch Hu Nichem Avelim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu takes care of the Avelim, of the mourners, and visits them. Dichtiv, as it says, Vahi achare mot Avraham, and it was after the death of Avraham, Vayibarech Elohim et Yitzhak beno, and Hashem came to go and see Yitzhak. Af ata nachem Avelim. You too need to be menachem Avelim. HaKadosh Baruch Hu, Kaver metim, the same, so too Hashem buries the dead, as it says by Moshe, and hence the context. Bagai. He buried Moshe Bagai. Af atak metim. You too need to bury the dead. What's the message of this Gemara? Our central theme. Tisha B'Av is all about our lack of being able to be no se ve'ol havero is able to carry the burden of our friend. We need to put ourselves in our friend's shoes and find out what they need. What does our friend need at this time? Do they need their speech or their words or their divrei Torah or their hashkafa or their dress to be criticized? Or they need to be uplifted by us as a friend. You know what? Great. Good for you. I'm happy you're doing this mitzvah. Good for you. Even if I'm not there yet, I'm happy you're doing it instead of tearing somebody down. Maybe a person, you don't need, need to, to praise a person behind their back. Go to their house and say hello if they're sick. If God forbid, 
they're an avail, or maybe they just need to pick me up, pick up that phone. When a person sees you at a party, and maybe there's something glaring about them, they're not married, they don't have a child, stay away from that topic of conversation because it penetrates them and pierces them like knives. We need to get better, Rabotai, at being no se be all havero. You need to make sure that what we're doing is, is that we're building people up and not tearing them down. We need to understand that just like Hashem is with us at the Sineh, He was with Moshe at Matan Torah, always with us in, our, in, in the Gola, and at that moment in Betad, He is with us. And that is truly something to say the Beracha of Hatov Vehametiv about. Bezat Hashem will be able to take this message to heart. Always take and make sure that in that way we will be able to merit in a full redemption. Uh, we will get rid of Sinat Chinam. We will only engage in Ahavat Chinam. And next year, Birushalayim Habenuya. Amen.